and welcome to Build Series. I'm Laura Moraski with HuffPost. Excited to introduce this next guest to the Build stage. Trisha Yearwood rose to fame in the 90s with her debut single, She's In Love With A Boy, and has been a force in country music ever since. She has multiple Grammy, ACM, and CMA awards to her name and has branched out to become an author, cook, and entrepreneur. Now she's out with her first solo full-length album since 2007. It's a collection of Frank Sinatra covers called Let's Be Frank. Everyone, please welcome Trisha Yearwood. <laughs> Big crowd out here for you today. Awesome. We are so excited to have you here at Build. Again, you've been, this yes, is your second time I'm happy here, to be so. back. Yeah, and this time we're talking about this amazing new album that's out in the masses today. It was out a little bit before, but now anyone can access it. That's right. Uh, and this is something that's been in the, the works kind of for a while, right? I actually wanted to make a standards record for about 20 years. Um, some of you weren't born yet. It's cool. Um, <laughs> but I I, uh, I guess I was always busy making country records, and I was then I had a TV show, and then I'm on the road with my husband, and it just sort of, um, I thought I could make that record any time. And three years ago was Frank Sinatra's 100th birthday would have been, and they had a big, uh, the Grammys did a big celebration, and I was asked to sing, and I sang I'll Be Seeing You, and um, Don was, was, who you saw in the film there, was a uh, musical director. So that's kind of when we talked about, maybe we should make an album of this. He, he asked me if I was interested. I'm like, yes, like, let's do this tomorrow. Took us a while to get our schedules together. But last summer, we spent um, eight days at Capitol Records in L.A. and um, on Frank, singing on Frank's microphone. That was his microphone in the shot. And um, it was an amazing experience. Yeah, tell us about that. What was it like to kind of be in that studio, singing on his microphone and singing these songs that he made famous? I kept saying, you know, that you're... You're walking into this iconic studio. It's a historical studio. You're singing on his microphone. They even give you the bar stool to sit on to relax as Frank's, you know. And my first thought was, why is this not in a museum? And then somebody today said, well, Capitol Records kind of is a museum because of the history that is there. You walk down the hallway and there's pictures of Frank on the wall, Dean Martin, Judy Garland, Keeley Smith, Bob Dylan. You know, you're just like, this is the place. And so you felt that vibe. It definitely, well, there was definitely a vibe in the room. Amazing. I'm sure that like channeled through you and into the beautiful nature of the songs as well. Yeah, and these songs, they're so, I mean, they call it the Great American Songbook, these songs, and they really do stand the test of time. They're so well written. They're so, they're such a joy to sing. And I can't really explain it, but as a singer, when you find a song that you really feel like you can just get lost in and the melodies are so beautiful, it's just a, there's just a joy and a challenge to sing some of these songs, but you just they, they they really do hold up and the, and what they're talking about is very current you know this is about love and it's about heartbreak and loss and happiness all the things that are are universal and still relevant today right Absolutely. i mean that's the thing so you recorded with a big orchestra too and a lot of different musicians in there so at that point um what was it like to be in the studio with all those musicians etc well we did record with there were various sizes of orchestra depending on what the song was. But the biggest I think we had was like 62 people and 55 was about the norm. And you know, I'm a country singer and we're used to like, you count it off. And if, if you're singing live, the band counts it off. If I don't come in in the right place, the band just vamps on the one, right? You don't do that with an orchestra. They got charts. <laughs> they're gonna um, they're gonna stop and you don't wanna be the chick that makes 55 people have to start over. <laughs> um, and I don't know if you've ever, you know about music, but you don't, you know, you can punch in a wrong note, but you can't punch in a 55 piece orchestra. I mean, you can, but you shouldn't. <laughs> so. So um, I just wanted to be prepared. I was nervous, especially the first day. I was sure. really nervous. Um, but they were wonderful. They made me feel like I belonged there, and that gave me confidence to go in and do what I've been wanting to do forever. Yeah, and this is these are so many songs to choose from. I mean, you whittled it down. What was that process like, picking and choosing which of these songs that you were actually going to perform and, and record? When I decided to, to focus this album and call it Let's Be Frank and really focus on Frank and, and not just, the, just all of these standards, I realized that Frank recorded all of these standards. So I had about 100 songs that I love, that I'm like, I want to record these songs. And it was Don Was who eventually got tired of me saying, well, I'm not sure yet what the songs are. It's like, well, we have to write charts. We have to we have to prep for this. And he um, he made me sit down with a piece of paper in front of him like a school teacher and write what, what would be your 12 right now. Huh. And 11 of the 12 ended up on the record, and then we ended up putting a, an original song on. So that was how I narrowed it down. But I do still have 88 songs on that list. <laughs> so, so we <laughs> might have a sequel. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> well, Don was, I mean, he's recorded with so many amazing people. What was it like? What did he bring to the, the fold for you? Don is everyone's spirit animal you know he is really just he is love he is 
calm. He's encouragement. And you, you can be lulled into thinking that Don is here for the good vibes. If he doesn't clap, if he likes something, he snaps, you know, and it's like, he's so cool. And, but you're just, he's kind of there. And then he's just listening, but he is so tuned in and he knows his music so well. And he, then he'll come in and make a suggestion or say, that's the take. Um, we're not changing a thing. Here's what I love about it. And he's always right. He, he would take the songs home every night and listen intently and come back the next morning and say, this is what I think. And he was always right. I mean, he, he has such a great musical sense. It was so much fun. We just enjoyed making music, which is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Well, how do you prep for something like that? How do you, who have listened to these songs for all these years, make them your own and sort of come into the studio with a with a vision in mind, you know the, what I do, and this is what I do when I'm making a country record. Although I'm I'm learning songs that no one's heard, so they're not going to compare me to anybody else. And you have to first of all go. This is Sinatra. No one's going to say, you know, he was good, but I really nail those songs way better than him. <laughs> <laughs> no one. So there's Sinatra's here. You're not trying to you're not trying to jump the bar. Um, you're just trying to pay respect, and um, so. You know, for me, it was to learn the songs, know the songs, know the arrangements, make sure they felt like me, and not try to overthink it. You know, it's my best work when I do something that I feel good about is is what just comes out. And usually, if you do some lick in the studio that you think is cool, and then you want to, you go, oh, I can do that again. Let me go do that, do that better. You never ever, when it's planned, it's never as good as when it's not. So I'll, that was the other thing that was great about this process is that we recorded live with the orchestra, everything happening at the same time. And there's magic and there's give and take with musicians and the conductor that happens in the room live that doesn't happen when everybody goes home and you're just on the mic by yourself. So most of the vocals were live. I mean, I did fix a couple of notes, but most of the vocals ha happened, 99% happened when everybody's in the room together. And th that's a magic you can't recreate. Sure. I mean, these are songs that you've been listening to for a long time. Take me back to so sort of your first memories of listening to Frank Sinatra. I know your mom has been an influence on your music career. Yeah, my mom was born in 37. So um, as a kid, you know, when you're a little kid, you don't really understand a time. So you're watching movies and you think that this was this happened last week. You know, it's like you don't really understand that they, the movies might have been made before you were born. Mm -hmm. um, but I love, she loved old movies. She loved um, musicals, loved this music. And so that was my first memory of hearing this music. My, my, my folks both loved a lot of different kinds of music, so I got exposed to a, a lot, which was great, and got to kind of pick and choose. And they taught me that you didn't have to love just one kind of music. You could love it all. Yeah. Um, and so there were songs that I heard in high school, uh, songs like The Man That Got Away, which Frank sang at The Gal That Got Away, and, um, and of course, Summer of the Rainbow. I was the kid who, um, before you could just at the touch of a button watch anything you ever wanted to watch, you had to wait a year yeah. to every year to watch The Wizard of Oz on TV on a Sunday night. And so um, I waited every year to watch that, you know, to watch that movie. Um, so I've always loved these songs and known them, and, and I, I'm really... This is I'm I'm this is such a surreal wonderful experience for me because it has been such a long time coming. Do you you joked earlier that you have like, you know, 80 some of that songs that you could record. Would you do something like this down the line whether it's recording other uh, people's songs or more frank? Yeah, you know, there's a Yes, and I and that wasn't a joke. I have 88 more songs. I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is something really fun about these songs that are already established and that people know and getting to getting to sing a song that you've known your whole life there's a joy in finding songs no one's heard and making them your own but I really it's really fun so I would love to find a way to do this again and in a, and maybe in a little different way maybe in the same way I don't know but I, I hope I I mean you know the album's been out you know for like you know eight hours but I would love to do this again so I'm hoping <laughs> that um, I'm hoping that we get a chance to uh, to make more of these no pressure, right? No pressure <laughs> at all. But there is one original song on the album, and it's very special because you wrote it with your husband, Garth Brooks. Yes. And uh, can you talk a little bit about that and how that came into the fold? Well, so Garth is, um, you know, pretty famous. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he, he, um, he's in several Songwriters Hall of Fames, and um, I'm not in any uh, song or hall of fames. I, am, um, I have written songs, and um, we recorded a song that we wrote together on our Christmas album, so it's not like it's uncharted territory, but I'm not a confident writer. I'm really good at things that are easy, and I will quit really fast on things that are hard and require work, and um, <laughs> writing for him is like breathing. For me, I know how to tell a story. I've written books, but I don't know how to rhyme very well. I'm not a poet like he is. He's a poet. So 
it's a good collaboration. Um, I came in with this title, and I said, I have this title in my head. I don't know why. It's for the first time I'm in love for the last time. And, and you know, like, go, Hall of Fame songwriter. There you go. And he, he started singing this melody that was out of, like, another era. It was just this, and it was the melody that you'll hear on this song. And uh, it, it was just so beautiful. And we worked on it off and on for, he, he, he pushed me to work on it for several weeks. And we got it done long before this project. And um, we weren't sure where it fit. It's like, I don't, it, we loved the song. We felt like it was about us, mm -hmm. but we didn't know if it was, uh, it didn't really sound like a country record. Wasn't sure if we, you know, how would we get it to Broadway? Is there a Broadway show that might sound like that kind of song? And so when this album came about, he was the one who encouraged me to play it for Don Was. Um, and again, I want to say, you know, you know, never in the history of my life would I say, Rodgers and Hammerstein wrote a good song, but let me show you something I wrote. You know, so so I wanted to be very respectful, and I was nervous about that. But Don and Vincent Mendoza, who was our conductor and arranger, loved it, and they said, we're doing it. And so um, I'm honored to have it. it it's, a, it's a personal piece of me on a record where it seems to sort of fit musically. Yeah, it, it, it's seamless. It really is. When you listen to Thank the you. album, you'll, 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 you, it, it blends in very beautifully. It's Thank perfect. You. Thank you. you. You know, you talked, you joked about work, writing and not writing with Garth, but you guys were on tour for like three and a half years together. What was that like, kind of working and being on the road and, and touring the country uh, together with him? We're these really strange people who really enjoy each other's company. <laughs> <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> so we, when we got married, we had both been married before, and we um, made made a very conscious decision that we didn't want to be together to be apart. And we really do um, like to be together. And so we we try to arrange our schedules, um, which which is a compromise on both of our parts. Then sometimes we don't go, you know, I'd love to stay an extra day in the city and shop, but um, he's not here, so I'm going home to him. So, you know, it's that kind of thing. It's like we make sure we make our make each other a priority. And I think that's uh, on the road, you know, that was so much fun because usually when you tour, if you're a touring artist, and since we both are, you... Um, you go on the road and you're doing what you love to do and what you were born to do, but you miss the person that you want to be with and share everything with. And you, and very few people get to do this together. So for us, that tour was heaven because we got to do what we feel like we were meant to do and we got to be together and it was the best of everything. And now I understand you, you finally moved into your house that you built like in Tennessee or something, right? Yes. And how is that going? And like, I know you were a big part of the design of that too. I still don't have a picture on the wall, oh. but um, we do have a bed and the kitchen works and, uh, <laughs> I, I, we have some couches in there that we've now had in the house for over a year and still the little styrofoam things that are on the bottom of the, you know, they're, they're still on there. So I'm like, we really need to spend some time here. <laughs> but, you know, that tour was, we knew it was going to be kind of crazy and Garth hadn't toured in 18 years. And um, I don't know that he, you know, he is he is probably the person who is the most um, superstitious and skeptical about how things are going to go. And I was the one going, this is going to be great. Everybody's going to come. People are going to show up. I think every night he thought no one's going to be there. And so it turned into a much bigger tour than he thought it was going to be. So we were gone a lot. and um, But we were together again, so it, it was good. So we, we'll get there. We're going to have plenty of time to sit on the front porch and talk about what we used to do. So right now we're just we're just going. You're busy. Well, I understand you're working on new music and an uh, original music for yes. a new country album. What yes. can we expect for that? Um, well, after being on this tour for three and a half years, I realized that I was um, doing a cooking show and touring with my husband and having a great time. But music is what feeds my soul. And so that's why last year two albums got made. Um, this first be Let's Be Frank. And then um, I started working on a country record in the spring in, in about May. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's a freedom of being 54 and just feeling like I'm life's too short. I'm just going to have fun and do what I want to do. Although I feel like I've kind of done that for a long time. Um, I... I, uh, I had the best time. I was nervous about going in because I do it old school. I go in and sit with publishers and songwriters um, and they play me their songs. And that's, you know, we don't do that much face to face these days. And so to sit with a writer and go, mm, I like it, but it's not really for me. I mean, you have to be, you know, but, it, but, but if you do that, you get, they get a lot more feedback about, okay, let's, what to picture in the second round? What do we do? So we got great songs. I was pleasantly surprised. I'm not chasing anything. I'm not trying to be some trendy thing. I think when you hear this record, you'll, you'll go, oh, this is Trisha. Um, but I, I love the song. So, and, and surprisingly, and not intentionally, a lot of the songs have been written or co-written by women. So um, I just noticed that when I, I mean, I just picked what I thought were great songs. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of chick writers on this. This is really great. So um, I'm, I'm excited. 
that'll come out in the fall. That's great. I love to hear the chick writers on yeah. that. And we, we just saw some successes with the Grammy Awards, seeing Casey Musgraves. Casey Musgraves. Right? What, what do you think about that? Winning the album of the year, the biggest coveted um, award of the night. Do you feel like it's a good step in the right direction? I do. And, and I'll say because I think Golden Hour for her, her album was an album that she purely made because... She's saying, I'm an artist. This is what I want to say. I don't think she was concerned about all of the things that come after you make the record. We have to be. We want to, we, we, we're marketing. We want to sell records. But we, but if you're going to call yourself an artist, your first, your first love, your first priority has to be making sure that you take care of that music and do what you feel in your heart. And then you just, you hope you're going to connect with somebody out there and, and everybody else will help you figure out ways to get it out there to everybody. So I think that's what Casey did with that record. And I think that's why she's being recognized. I think, I think you get rewarded when people can tell when you follow in your heart or when you're going, Oh, that's, that might be a hit. I don't really like that, but let's, let's record that. I mean, I think people, people can tell. Yeah, and I think it's so nice to see her recognized and see country music recognized. At the same time, you 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 hear and you see um, headlines like women don't get played on country radio as much. I mean, do you think we're we're in the moving in the right direction in that way? Do you think that women are still siloed from country radio, which is still a very important and part of country music industry? I think they, I think women still are absolutely uh, getting the raw into the deal at, at country radio, I think, and, and radio in general. Although there are a lot of women doing really well in pop. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, there's these kind of old antiquated ways of thinking, which is, uh, and, and I wanted to go, well, who says that's the way it is? Like, well, you don't play two female artists back to back and you make sure you got to play four guys before you pay, play a girl. Like, whose rules are those? Like, there are no rules. And I think, you know, they're about to get a rude awakening because these women are really rising up. We're going to start marching to your radio station, and we're going to you're going to be afraid not to play our records. I think so. Um, I would I would I would march. I would do that march. Um, like I think I think it's like oh, there's like 20 angry women in the parking lot. Well, let's play let's play some Trisha Yearwood. I just feel like it could happen. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, but you know it's true. It's like one of those things where it's like it's where it's time, right? It, yeah. it feels like it, it's the right. And time. everybody says, "Oh yeah, we you know we this is what we want," but then you got to really do it. You know, I think that's the I think that's the key. At the same time, you said earlier you're kind of like you're you know your age or whatever. You're just like. I, I'm taking a chill attitude. Do you feel like you're just really comfortable with where you are today, that you don't feel that pressure to be like, okay, I need a hit single. I need to do this. Yes, I've done I mean, that. Yes. I've been doing that for yes. 30 years. And, and, you know, I have to credit my husband for that because I am competitive, and I also am always, like, analyzing myself, my career, and everything I'm doing. And he's the one who said, you know, you you need to you need to realize that you don't have to prove anything to anybody just do just do you you know and and that that was what I needed to hear um and and since he said that uh, several years ago I've been like yeah and it doesn't mean that you don't want those things I want to have a number one record on the radio I want to sell records I want to be successful currently I don't want to be just known for what I did what I've done but at the same time I'm good like I'm okay yeah, I love that. It's a good, it's probably takes a, a sense of relief, you know, to feel that way. Yeah, and that's something that you earn. It's not, I mean, I you I couldn't have felt this way at 26 years old when my first single came out. It's like, you just have to, you have to get there. Yeah, and I saw a stat that it's been 20 years since you entered the Grand Ole Opry or something like that this yeah. year, right? Yes. Congratulations. I mean, it's just like you've had so many successes o over the course of the se last several years. To what do you owe your success? I mean, so many people don't make it. I think that what I do in, in this is, this is for music and food and everything that I do. I do, I, everything comes from a real place. You know, I, I, I've never doubted in my whole life since I was a five-year-old girl what I wanted to do when I grew up. I always wanted to be a singer. It comes from a very genuine place. I didn't grow up saying I want to be famous. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to be a singer. And I wanted to find a way to do it. And I love that I get to do it on this level. I think I would be doing it, you know, at your local Holiday Inn five nights a week <laughs> if I wasn't doing it this way. But because I just, it, it really is what I need to do. I think that's the secret. And I also will say for country music that that the fan base for country music is, and I have hesitate even calling them fans because they feel like friends. It's, there is a loyalty and there is a, I'm going to come along on the ride with you for as long as you'll do this, that is unique to our industry and we're so lucky to have that. So that support and that long-term relationship is what allows us to do what we do. Yeah, it's almost like a family. It really is. You know, when you see the artist, you know, Commiser you know, come together, talk to their fans. It really feels familial. Yeah, it and really if does. and if you are a fan of country music and you have an artist you like, 
there's a really good chance in, that you're going to get to meet that person and you're going to get to have an interaction and talk to them and and get to know them a little bit. I mean, I can't tell you. I mean, I can imagine as a kid, if I would have got to meet Linda Ronstadt when I was a 15-year-old kid, I mean, I'm in for life, you know. And um, and when I met her for the first time, I um, I was I I felt 15. I was like I was so nervous because I'm she's my hero. Um, so I get. I mean, I I just feel like that's such a cool thing, and I, I love that. I think that is an, again a kind of a unique thing to country music is accessibility. There's uh, you said earlier something about Broadway, et cetera. Is there something that you haven't tackled that you're like, okay? I still got this. I want to take this on next. You know, it's funny. This is the first, you're the first person that asked me that since this record came out, and this is what I would have said, Um, but we did that. Um, (laughs) I I would, I would love to do Broadway. I would love to do something on Broadway, and I've always wanted to do that. So, um, and my husband has said he would live in New York with me for six months, so we'll see. (laughs) I don't know. Come to New York. I don't know. Can, can you drive a tractor down Fifth Avenue? Is that, (laughs) is that allowed? (laughs) We'll make for you guys. We'll make an exception. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. You know, he is the guy. You know, he just he's, he's the guy that can get into a country without a passport. You know, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, it's Garth. And they're like, oh, come on in, Garth. You're fine. It's like, who who is this guy? It's like, What's going on? <laughs> well, we look forward to that. Um, well, we have some questions from the crowd right now, so uh, okay. let's get cool. to that. First. Hey, tell me your name. And- Hi, Tricia. I'm Matt. Hey, Matt. Okay, so uh, obviously, as you talked about, you were on tour with Garth for three years, doing a set in the middle of of the sh- of the big show. Yes. With this new album and your new country music album coming out, are you going to tour, uh, doing the theaters that I know you did, you know, several years ago? Are you going to get back to doing that? I am going to do that, and I. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if Garth's really nice, I'll let him come out in the middle of my show and do a couple uh, of songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are in the process of working on those dates now, and we're going to do some symphony shows. And also, um, I'm opening the Nashville Symphony for three days if you want to road trip it in October. We'll um, but we're, we're just now setting up that tour. So, yes, we will be doing that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for that question. I know you played the Rainbow Room last night, too. I did. How oh, was that, by the so way? So incredible. I still, I can't even. It was just, it was a dream come true, and it was just so much fun. Valentine's Day gig, Frank Sinatra. It yeah. couldn't be more romantic than it was that. really, really so. cool. All right, we have a couple more questions from the crowd here. Yes, sir. Oh, right here. What's your name? Hardy. Ryan Hardy from Queens, New York. What's your favorite dinner with Dwight Brooks? My favorite dinner? He likes... Anything that you can cook the entire meal in one pan. <laughs> and he is the eat it cold the next day with a fork out of the pan guy. So lasagna, any kind of casserole. I make this broccoli chicken cheese rice casserole he likes. Um, and leftovers, not really a thing in our house. So, but occasionally. But that, that's, that's his favorite thing. Oh, Good luck, you guys. <laughs> Thank you. We need it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. We have time for one more question. Hey. Hi, Trish. Uh, Ron Jason. Hey. Last night was amazing. Thank you for being there. Oh, you were that there last great. night? Yes, ma'am. Thank great. you. Um, now that you've done the American Standards Frank Sinatra album, are you thinking about doing a, maybe a duets album with someone? Well, there is this guy I live with. <laughs> <laughs> and we, <laughs> we, we did a duet country record, and it was sort of our le- testing ground to see if we could, you know, not kill each other in the studio to do a duet album. Um, and we definitely uh, want to do that. Um, Garth would tell you if he was sitting here that, he, that that I have done duets with a lot of different people, including Don Henley and Aaron Neville. Garth says, and I've done a lot of duets with, oh, wait, I've never sung with anyone but Trisha. It's a problem. It's an issue. Um, but I, I would love to do a duet record with him. Um, my I talked about Lena Ronstadt being my hero, and and I I wish you know, I wish I had a, had a chance to sing with her. Um, I got to go see her do a, a show where she talked about her career and played some rare music, and um, that was really cool. But I, like, like I was telling you, I really do love seeing other people's songs. So I could do, you know, maybe it's, you know, I just went to see Cher. It could be Let's Be Cher next or Let's Be Linda. Maybe that's what I'm going to do. Maybe it's going to be a series of Let's Be, and I'll just get to have all these, wear all these different hats. That would be fun. I love it. All of the above. We'll take it, right, guys? <laughs> yeah, we'll take it from Trisha Yearwood. Well, I, you are a busy gal. I know you're doing something on Facebook right after this, correct? That's right. We, um, we were here. We've been here for several days, and I love New York. Thank you for being so hospitable. I want to say to the world that, I'm, that New York is a very nice place. Everybody's so nice. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we did a book signing or a CD signing at Williams-Sonoma, but we didn't. Uh, we can't get everybody's CD signed, so we're going to do a live 
uh, CD signing after this, uh, Facebook Live, and um, we're going to randomly sign a few um, special CDs for folks. So um, join us after this, and if you want to get a CD and have it signed, um, come on to Facebook Live. All right. Well, thank you for that, and thank you for your lovely questions. Thank you, Trisha, thank for you spending guys the so much. With us. Thank you for thank the you. The album me. is out now. Get it. <laughs> <laughs>